Good evening all, I hope you are well. Well, this evening I'm going to be doing a first impressions of, well I was going to, I've got two that I haven't tried yet, of the Mayon blends which I bought from the Danish pipe shop. Um, one of them is the Jubileum, and the other one is the Red Caledonian. Now the Jubileum um, is actually a, a, a whiskey blend, um, and since I've been smoking this um, Solani so much, I figured I'll leave that for now. Um, it's probably a very similar kind of blend. Um, so instead I'm going to go for this Red Caledonian. Now the description for the Red Caledonian um, is the contents is a Cavendish, Kentucky, Oriental Turkish and Virginia. Um, and the flavorings are nuts, beans, sweet sugar. Um, so it's supposedly a very, very sweet blend. Um, probably too much of an aromatic for me, but I'm curious, I'm intrigued, mainly because I've been smoking aromatics quite a bit recently, which has really confounded me in terms of why my palate um, has changed to that extent. Um, and I'm thinking it could be to do with the loss of taste and smell whilst I was unwell, um, and perhaps um, I need something a little bit more flavoursome on the sweet end of the scale um, in order to enjoy it and to get the full um, spectrum of flavours possibly. I don't know is the short answer. Um, I do feel that although I've got I would say probably 90 to 95 percent back of my taste and smell it's not completely there. About a week or two ago I thought I had it back completely but I've noticed that um, I don't I still don't have full smell. Um, taste I, I feel like I've got all the taste but it's just slightly different if that makes any sense. Um, so I'm just wondering maybe that's had an effect on the type of tobacco that I'm enjoying at the moment. So let's open this up. Wow, very, very, very sweet. And very bright as well. It has a very, 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 do you know what this reminds me of? Um, this reminds me of, in terms of the pungency, um, it reminds me of Cherry Smash. It has that piquancy, not, not in terms of uh, chili heat, but it has that really astringent, bright, acidic, sweet. It's if you imagine, you know um, cherries, morel cherries, you, you get in the juice. That juice, if you drink that juice, it's got a really sweet, acidic, Kind of flavor that's the aroma but concentrated it's, it's really very sweet i'm not sure i'm gonna like this uh, looking at the tobacco very bright very bright bright Virgin virginia's in there um the slightly sort of uh, beigeier ones are probably the oriental um the dark ones will be the cavendish and i don't know which the kentuckys are it's a pretty, I wouldn't say dry, there is moisture in there, but it's really a minute or two out on the tray, should be fine. Um, it's it's really, it's almost, um, I remember when I first started smoking, I tried McBaron Scottish mixture, and that one also very, very sweet and bitey before my days of nine mil pipes, and um, that bit me like a good one. And I imagine if I would smoke this without a filter, I'd probably have exactly the same experience. It's, it's really very... The interesting thing is that there's no goop here. There's no stickiness whatsoever. It's literally dry. Um, it's ready to smoke. I've not really seen uh, a tobacco so dry yet, so aromatic. Right, in terms of a pipe, I, I could see that ghosting a pipe, no problem at all. At least from the aroma, we'll see what the flavor's like. So this this pipe here, um, it was actually interestingly enough, I was watching Ben, um, Unicorn Piper today. He did a, a video on, um, and he was talking about um, that he doesn't dedicate his pipes anymore to specific tobaccos. Um, I think right at the beginning, I, I probably had the odd one or two pipes which I smoked specifically, and I, st I would still say that I do have the odd one or two not in principle, it's just the way it's worked out. I've got my Boswell. Um, the Boswell bent apple, which I've always smoked uh, northwards in. 
um, and it just seemed appropriate to carry on doing that. Um, my Boswell sort of freehand Dublin, um, this one. I always only ever smoked um, Stonehaven or Rich Dark Flake in it, um, but I, I've done away with all of that. Um, I don't smoke those particular blends often enough anyway, and what I've done for the most part is split my pipes into genres, um, and I really only have three genres at the moment that I smoke. I have, well, it's one, a couple of genres in, clubbed into one, and then a couple of other ones. So yeah, I've got, for instance, Virginia's and Virginia Perique's I consider to be one grouping, and the vast majority of my pipes I smoke that in. Um, then there's Latakia pipes. So um, I've got um, maybe half a dozen Latakia pipes, um, and that I won't generally mix with other pipes because obviously that's quite a robust and distinct flavor. Um, and then I have a few pipes which are kind of in between, which I use for aromatics. Um, so for instance, this pipe um, I used for um, uh, uh, Amphora Full Aroma. Um, when I smoked it quite a lot, I only really smoked it in this pipe. Um, and sort of semi-aromatics and things like that, I often smoke in there. So uh, for instance, um, Erin More Flake I smoke in there. And I smoke Erin More Flake in my Virginia pipes as well, because that's a really a light aromatic, but mainly a Virginia. Um, so I would say that um, I would agree and probably do a very similar kind of thing to Ben in terms of sticking to genres but not necessarily to blends, um, to dedication of blends to pipes. Um, as he quite rightly says, there's, uh, you know, you want to enjoy your pipes, not just about, you don't want to be restricted to one particular blend for a particular one pipe to one blend, it's, you know, it really restricts your selection and when you sort of get the mood for a particular pipe but you don't particularly want that tobacco that it's dedicated to, it's restrictive. So just as, um, um, and he says just do what, you, what you're happy doing. Um, and I would say the same vein, I was watching uh, um, Mike Murphy. Um, he was talking about um, softy bits. He did a video on softy bits and he was talking about uh, some people say you should smoke it with a softy bit or with uh, heat, heat shrink um, tubing or this or that or the other. And um, he says it makes no difference. You know, whether you smoke a $5 pipe or a $1,000 pipe, it makes no difference. Just do whatever works for you. And that's the right thing to do. And absolutely 100% agree with him. Softy bits is not my thing. Um, I did use them for a while, but that's me. And, and for people it does work for, absolutely. Just everybody just smoke what they want, how they want, when they want. That's the main thing, is to enjoy what you're doing. So let's get to this uh, tobacco. It's the same with filters, I guess, you know, there's quite a split camp that way where the, you know, the vast majority of people don't use filters. Um, but I think there's quite a growing community of um, people who smoke with filters. Um, and I've certainly been a part of that for a couple of years now. And it works for me, but it obviously doesn't work for the vast majority of other people. And that's absolutely fine. I know that some people have said to me in the past that they feel there's a bit of a stigma attached to actually smoking with a filter that perhaps it's a little bit of a pussy way out to, to use a filter, but uh, absolutely not. And I think the more that people um, who do use a filter smoke them and don't sort of hide that fact, the better off other people will be who really need to use a filter, um, but don't and suffer in silence as a result, um, you know, with tongue bite and that kind of thing. Okay, let's get it lit. According to uh, the Danish Pipe Shop's website, this Mayan blend uh, Caledonian Red or Red Caledonian was one of their most favorite tobaccos back in, um, I think back in the 80s possibly. In the 80s and 90s. I'll just read what they, how they describe it. Um, red Caledonian style is the Mayan blend copy of the popular Red Caledonian pipe tobacco. 
very Danish, deliciously sweet, deliciously sweet and mild, a fine combination of our four best base blends, Virginia's Cavendish Fire Cured and Orientals, stored individually before the final hand blending. The fine aromas add character and balance to this superior mixture. In the 80s and 90s, this was one of our most sold tobaccos in the shop. Now, what's important for me is to see whether you can actually <clears throat> discern the tobaccos rather than just that heavy, intense flavoring. Sorry about that. Many times when I smoke a tobacco for the first time, I'll often know in the first minute or two whether I'm gonna like that tobacco. On this one, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that I get it right, just in my own mind. You know, with it sometimes I'll try tobacco for two minutes and just dump it and move on. Um, it may be a mistake, of course. It could be if I smoked it through or smoked it in different pipes or just stuck with it that I'd love it but I'm a bit fickle that way getting a tingle on the tongue and that's even with a filter Um, so immediately I get that really strong pungency, the same as the aroma actually. The flavour actually really does replicate the aroma of the tin, which is a very strong, bright, acidic, like a really acidic cherry flavour. But it's not just cherry, it's other flavours as well. The retrohel gives me quite a cool kind of in a sensation. I would say immediately that this is a tobacco to be sipped gently. You tug this too hard and it'll just burn you. And you don't really want that intensity. You just want to sip it and just slowly savor the different levels of flavor. And um, I think this is a tobacco which possibly would grow on me with time. But um, put it this way, if you've got a, an asbestos tongue and you can take um, tobaccos even if they bite other people, then you could chug away at this and enjoy it. But um, I think this tobacco is one for sitting and relaxing and focusing on just sipping. Uh, I probably wouldn't enjoy this sitting in the workshop while I'm working or even sitting at my desk while I'm processing photos while I'm absent-mindedly smoking. It's not one of those, it's, it's one of these where you have to sit and enjoy and focus and kind of strain your mind to appreciate the different levels of flavor. Despite this fact, the fact of this being a real aromatic kind of flavor sensation, I do think it's actually quite complex and there's a lot to be had with this tobacco. You could smoke it on a very superficial level and just in, enjoy those intense flavors but you could also sit back relax and focus and sip and as I say try to um, sort of weed out the subtleties in the flavor levels and I think there is that there uh, I think so very early on I've only been smoking it for a few minutes now but that's the impression I get when I smoke uh, cherry smash as nice as it is for an aromatic I don't get any of those kind of complexities and, and uh, flavor levels When I first read the ingredients list, I was kind of puzzled. When you've got a sweet, a, a really strong, sweet, aromatic tobacco, why do you need to put in fire cure tobaccos and orientals? Um, aren't they all going to be completely overpowered by the aromatics? And that's what really piqued my interest. 
it seemed to me like it's a waste of money. Why put in a rare, you know, rare tobaccos like Orientals or exotic tobaccos? Anyway, I'm going to smoke this down a bit more and I'll come back to you. Hey, we're back. So I'm a ways further down the bowl. Well, past the halfway mark. Um, I have to say this blend has taken me by surprise. Um, obviously this is just the first bowl. So when you smoke the bowl, of course, you open the tin, you get that blast of sweet, bright, acidic sweetness, like that really sort of acidic cherry kind of aroma. <clears throat> when you light the tobacco, the same. You get that intense blast of flavor. But once you settle down into the smoke, I was saying before about the Orientals and the Kentucky, what do they, how do they belong into this, in this blend? What are they doing here? If you relax and focus on this blend, the way it's working for me at the moment is that when you draw in, you get all that sweetness, the aromatics, and then on the finish, in your mouth, on your tongue, and especially the retrohale, that's when you get the rest of it. So I, I don't know how they've done this, but essentially you're getting the aromatics on the draw and everything else then comes into focus after that so the finish in the mouth on the tongue and then the retrohale gives you a sp the spiciness of the kentucky and um, on the finish in your mouth you get the sort of aromatic sweetness essencey kind of sweetness from the orientals um, and it's all there and you can actually separate it out and, and enjoy it all together at the same time it's really quite amazing um, I'm, the amazingness is not necessarily in the flavor profile, that's just a matter of taste. You know, you either will or won't like it. But what's amazing is how it all comes together, how it's all separate and discreet, yet all together as well at the same time. That's pretty awesome. You've got to retrohale. You just have to retrohale on this blend. You know, if you're going for a straight aromatic, you can get the flavor in your mouth and that's it. But with this one, to appreciate the rest of the blend, to get all the components, you've got to retrohale. In my opinion. Also, it does sneak up on you. It, there is a bit of nicotine here as well. And it's also quite full. It feels like you're having quite a rich experience. I'm not sure that this would necessarily be an all-day kind of blend, an all-day kind of smoke. It's quite, um, it's, I wouldn't say completely full, but it's certainly around a medium, medium plus kind of size in terms of the fullness in your mouth, the, the richness in, and the whole experience of the smoke. It's, it's, there's quite a, a bit of intensity there. It's like a it's like a, a sweet treat, um, but one that you need to savor. As I said earlier on, it definitely needs to be savored. You need to be able to relax. It's perfect for unwinding at the end of the day, wanting something nice and sweet. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you can have two different camps. You can have those who really want something heavy and robust, a latakia possibly, um, something like that to really sort of let the nicotine settle in and, and just sort of wind down or you want something nice and sweet, a treat, um, which equally will help you wind down. And I, I believe this tobacco will work very well for the latter experience. When you retrohale, you do get that intensity, that um, spiciness from the Kentucky, um, which is almost similar to, in other words, it gives you that same um, abrasive kind of experience in the nose that you get from a Latakia blend, but it's just not smoky. If that makes any sense, I'm trying to kind of describe that sensation. So you get that kind of rich, um, uh, savory, I suppose, to some extent, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spicy, 
savory kind of richness which you get with latakia but without the latakia and rather it's just a it's sort of an intense spicy experience The aromatic flavor is really pretty constant. It may not have the that real sort of intense blast as you get uh, right at the beginning of that uh, sort of fruity flavor, but it's there all the time. Um, so if you if you do enjoy an aromatic, you won't be disappointed on that front at all. And I can see why it would have been very popular um, with real pipe smokers back in the 80s and 90s. When I say real, I'm not saying that we're not real, but I'm talking about the sort of the 80s and 90s would have been almost the latter end of the golden age of pipe smoking possibly even after the golden age well the golden age is much earlier but certainly the end sort of before it became a popular hip kind of thing which i think nowadays to some extent it is um, and i can understand why they would have gone for this tobacco it's a tobacco which is it gives you everything that you want in terms of the, the, the fullness, there's nicotine, there's richness, and you're getting good quality tobacco, and at the same time, you're getting a nice sweet blend. I could see why people would um, smoke this because it would be absolutely divine in company. You know, um, it would be very, very um, enjoyable for people around you who don't smoke a pipe, but they would enjoy the aroma. So it kind of ticks a lot of boxes. So I could see why it would have been so popular. How this would fare with age, I don't know, because aromatics generally don't fare very well with age. They tend to become a little bit bitter um, as they age because the, the, the aromatics break down. Um, but the components, they should age well. Um, how they will work together with an aromatic, which perhaps isn't at its best, I don't know. Maybe it'll give it a little bit more longevity um, because of the quality of the tobaccos. And it may also help the fact that with the age, some of the that initial blast, that intensity of the aromatics might just settle down a little bit. But with, with aromatics, it doesn't necessarily work that way. So for instance, with a Latakia blend, um, they will become more subtle and more smooth and gentle with age. Whereas with aromatics, they could actually turn it, not just become, they wouldn't necessarily become more subtle and more smooth. They might just become bitter uh, or just taste off, you know, So I'm not sure how that would work. I, I might actually get in touch with uh, Danish Pipe Shop and ask them what they think about that. So all in all, a really surprising tobacco. Is it something that I would order to keep? You know, do I see myself finishing this 100 gram tin um, quickly enough that I should feel the need to, to have some in stock? Because obviously I wouldn't want to be aging it. Answer is I don't know. It's a bit early days. You know, just a, a month or two ago, I would never have considered a tobacco like this. You know, the Celani 131 has been a bit of a, um, a, a, a sort of a, a crossroads for me. It really opened my eyes to some aromatics. I think the aromatics that I'd had when I first started smoking a pipe were the fairly typical over-the-counter goopy kind of aromatics. Um, which is why I never went back to them, but I've really s smoked some really good quality aromatics recently. So there we are, a very interesting blend. If you like a little bit of aromatics, although in this case it's not just a little bit, it's quite a bit, um, quite um, intense aromatic, but it's got good quality base tobaccos in there, and that makes a big difference in the overall experience of this. It's not just about the aromatics. Um, so if you're interested in that, give it a try. Um, even if you're in the UK, I'd be more than happy to send a couple of samples out um, over across the water. It's just too expensive to send just a couple uh, of samples out. But certainly here in the UK, if uh, a couple of guys want to try it, get in touch and I'll send you a little baggie. Thanks very much, everybody. Catch you on the next one.